It's the uh, third week of February. It's still raining. It's blowing half a gale. The river's flooded. It was dropping. Now it's rising again. How on earth do I get back on the river? And the answer at the moment is I can't. I'm not going out filming in the pouring rain on a rising river. However, I'd like to quickly just talk about something that happened nearly a month ago when I could get onto the river and I did a bit of uh, general fishing for chub and for roach. And that is one of the things you have to watch with chub, especially on light float gear, is that they're very good at finding the snags. And you can play a chub out in the open water, get it ready for landing, and it dives under your feet into the rushes or old weed beds and snags you up and either breaks the fairly fine hook length or unhooks itself. And this is what happened over the three trips that I did the end of January, early February. On the first trip that I did with the 18 foot Shakespeare rod, I showed myself catching a nice chub I had a little chub, about 12 ounces, but also a bit later into the session, I hooked a couple of decent chub, we call it a nominal three pounders, that both found what must have been an old weed bed, uh, sort of more or less opposite me or slightly upstream. And they both dug their noses into this weed bed and the hook came free. And there's not a lot you can do about it. That rod wasn't the best for playing chub. It had plenty of bend in it. Certainly not as good as the uh, Carbotech that I used on the subsequent trips. When I then fished on the, the second stretch, on the, the next trip that I, I showed you, me catching a nice roach, I did hook a chub fairly early on. In fact, the first fish I hooked was a chub. And there's this little clump of reeds right near my feet. And it did its utmost to get into those reeds. It was all right when it was down in the swim coming up river. And that was pretty much the only snag for me to worry about. And it got in and out of those reeds. One of the problems with this swim is that there are overhead branches, so you can't just manoeuvre the rod wherever you like. You can't stick your arm up in the air too high or you'll be up in the tree. So you've got to be quite aware of how you're manoeuvring the rod at all times to try and avoid getting snagged up in the tree and maybe damaging the rod, as well as trying to get the chub out of those uh, that little reed bed. Fortunately, the hook hold held all right. The following session I went back and I hooked another chub a little bit bigger this time. That first one in this swim was a pound and three quarters that I'd landed. This one was a, a bit over two pounds I suppose and this time I was able to keep my arm well out and keep the fish away from the reeds and I hope it wasn't aware enough of the reeds and I was able to land it. And one tip with chub, if you can get them up in the water, we always used to say, get them to go pair. Their eyes are above the water. They can't see the same and they go pair. And chub, if you can hold them at that, will often give up. You can uh, drag them to the net pretty much, which is not always that easy if they're still lively. But when you've played them for a, a couple of minutes they they're quite often they don't have the stamina of some other fish fish like carp or, or barbel or mullet and stuff like that and if you can get their head up and keep their head out of the water they they often that that's it and when their their head is out of the water they they're much less likely to take you into a snag it doesn't mean they won't give a last gasp kick and dive into the roots or whatever. But it's something worth considering. 
The final little clip, and this is only a very short video. I also fished that run that I'd fished on uh, that previous video, just to finish off the sort of uh, third session. And when I'd caught the chub the previous time, it had just come up through the middle without too much bother. This second time I hooked the chub again well down the swim, but there were trailing trees and their branches were, were going into the water. And this one came up in the water rather than going deep and it got itself into that tangle of twigs and left me well and truly hooked to the twigs. And that was the end of that. So that one got away. Possibly I should have uh, played it a bit harder, got it moving towards me a bit quicker. So you've really got to be on your toes with chub to stop them reaching the snags. You've got to think ahead, outwit them, use side strain, whatever it takes. Sometimes they're just going down deep in front of you and you need to try and lift them up so they don't find snags that are down on the bottom. And even in the winter on the stair, there, there can be old lily roots and branches down there brought down by the floods and so on. Like I say, as soon as possible, I'm going to try and get back on the river and do some fishing and filming. But at this rate, it's uh, becoming increasingly unlikely before the end of the season, which is um, only three weeks away. But we shall see. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.